house tonight that were like the first time we heard of you was about a year ago on tour with ICP and we're back because we dig that wicked shit. Today is a very special day. It is another day in my awakening, my spiritual growth, my development as as I'm coming along in this truth movement, this awakening that's been happening to not only myself, but to a lot of people. Everybody's trying to reach for answers and look in different directions. Today's a very special day because the band that I call the soundtrack to my awakening, Head P.E., announced last night that they're going to be playing basically a surprise show in the middle of nowhere. And I happen to live right on the outskirts of the middle of nowhere, so I played a little hooky from work. And now I'm driving up to see the guys of Head P.E. I started listening to them in 1997 on their first album. Probably the, I've never felt an instant connect with the band, with their message. I felt like they were, they were speaking with me. We already started to go on the same direction and questioning things and looking things a little different, whether it be Mayans and aliens and prophecies and scriptures and how to be towards each other and getting past things. And I, I just felt this instant connection with them. And I was blessed in 97 to be able to actually meet them and hang out with them on their RV on their first tour, I believe. And it was amazing. I've been listening now to them for 13 years. I listened to the first three albums religiously and they just, they just shaped, shaped me. They helped mold who I am and the direction I was going. Finally, Head P.E.'s back with some of that wicked shit for Des Moines. I listened to their first three albums religiously, and our, our paths of our awakening seemed to just course, correspond. It was just amazing. But we were also beginning to differ on the last album on a couple of key points, a couple of big key points. And it kind of made me question, you know, what I'm thinking, the, the direction I'm going. Of course, made me correct, you know, you know, question their direction. Are they leading me somewhere? Are they part of the machine that's distracting me from what's really going on? The truth movement can be one of the most confusing things ever. And all we're doing is trying to seek knowledge and seek betterment for not only ourselves, but everybody around us and even those we don't come in contact with. So let's find some truth. Either way, even if I get to see them or I don't get to see them or interview them, it's still going to be a great show. And it's still better than being at work, I'll tell you that much right now. We are on the tour bus with Head P right now. Before there was a truth movement, before there was an awakening, Head P.E. has been spitting shit like two strands of DNA becoming 12, talking about 2012, 12 tribes, they've been going through it for a long time. And now we're sitting here with MCUD, the lead singer, Jared of Head P.E. Thank you, thank you for taking time. Okay. Namaste. Good to be here, namaste. It's a pleasure, man. How do you feel now that before the truth movement, you were speaking this stuff, and now you see the movement coming along, and you see the people and the kids starting to talk about the same stuff that you were talking about in the 90s. How do you feel about being part of this truth movement now? Well, it's just a lifestyle thing, and it's just a, it's, it's a pleasure to be part of the movement, you know, uh, part of something bigger than, uh, than myself and uh, bigger than music in general. So it's, it's an honor, you know, everybody for for staying true to the underground and the truth movement and supporting Head P.E. for the last five years. That's all it takes is a few people like the ones in this room to change the course of humanity, you hear me? It's because of the people in this room there will be no microchipping of the population. No FEMA concentration camps. Des Moines, no one is coming to your house to take your guns away. Do you, do you feel like you're on the forefront of that truth movement? Uh, I, uh, that's for others to say. I can just say that I'm doing what seems to come natural to me as a lyricist and a producer or whatever. Where, where do you strive to get your lyrics from? Is it just from your readings and your learning, or is it, is it uh, something that comes to you? I think it's after reading and taking a bunch of stuff in through the different media sources, then there has to be some creative, intelligent thoughts that puts it all together and, and spits it out in a way that's most honest for, and sincere for myself. Have you found, you guys, I know you started touring with uh, ICP last year. Yeah. And uh, you guys really embraced the uh, Juggalo family. 
yeah. how are the juggalos <laughs> coming along with some of the shit you're talking about? Well, I think uh, it, it's a pleasure and an honor to like be uh, accepted by the juggalo family. And um, I think what's great about the juggalo family is they're already kind of a, a, a a segment of society that's kind of, you know, already decided they don't want to be a part of the mainstream. So that that's right in line with the whole head PE thing anyway, which the message and the music is not mainstream anyway, you know. Not at all, completely underground. So it goes right along the lines of the whole Juggalo vibe. You know? Have they embraced you? Have they, have they really felt the connection come along with that? Oh yeah, yeah, we're fully in the Juggalo family. We play the we play the, the gathering two years in a row and we just we have a lot of clown love and we're on tour now with psychopathic acts and we'll always put those uh you know we'll always have love for psychopathic uh acts and the family and everything can you feel the love can you feel the love the mad wicked clown love I can just start preaching. <laughs> well, let's save the preaching. Let's do the preaching with the music. How does the truth sound on guitar, Jackson? <laughs> Love seems to be a, uh, a universal theme and part of the awakening and truth that's going on, that, that uh, unconditional love is what's going to take us from this third and fourth dimension density into the, the fifth, as you speak of, 2013 stuff rolling around. How do you feel the love at these shows? Do you feel mad, wicked clown love, as they say, or yeah. is, it, is it something perverted? No, no, it's good. It's good. It's clown love. It's just uh, the love that a human family feels for each other. Do you, do you think that uh, the truth movement is becoming kind of uh, diluted, confused, off track at times? We get a lot, we seem to get a lot about trying to speak about who's exactly right and what's going on. Do you feel that's that's confusing us? Well, I think because the truth movement, there's so many different areas of study underneath that one heading that, yeah, of course, people are going to have different ideas about the different things, whether it's the government or uh, extraterrestrials or whatever, but... The most important thing is for everyone to just, you know, uh, concentrate on the things we have in common, which is like, you know, wanting uh, world peace and free energy and uh, the truth about uh, spirituality and everything to come out. That's what's most important is for people to, at the end of the day, feel self-empowered by the movement and not like so scared of the, the so-called Illuminati or whatever. Have you, have you at times, I know sometimes you've been recently getting into a lot of the uh, politics with a lot of your blogs and things like that, and I know you've been particularly uh, vocal towards Obama. Has his, you, what you just said there with peace movement and things like that, do you feel sometimes we're getting distracted now with this peace movement since he, he still seems to be advocating war. He's still uh, raising troop levels in Afghanistan. Well, he, uh, my gave opinion him is, I don't know that Obama's in charge of the Pentagon war machine. So, uh, you know, um, I can't advocate war or anything. In any way. I still support, uh, I still support him. More accurately termed corporatism, because fascism is when the corporations run the fucking government. I'll give you a hint, one fucking word, Halliburton. That's a corporation that makes fucking millions and billions of dollars off a war. And if you remember, that one motherfucking fascist, Dick Cheney, was also employed by Halliburton. And I can't stand that motherfucking pig! But I'm just saying, uh, I, I'm not convinced that he's in charge of the Pentagon war machine. There's obviously a lots of things that are above the president's head, whether it's the extraterrestrial reality, 
or lots of things that is beyond the president's control, you know. But do you still see him as a, a, a light worker? I, I know that's come up in like the New Age movement terms like I that. I do, because I have faith that he is, although a lot of times whatever we're seeing in the news may suggest that he's not, but I think there may be something going on behind the scenes. Uh, uh, and I just still keep a positive, sending him positive vibrations and hoping he can consistently do the right thing. I think there's a lot going on that we're, we don't know about. You, you mentioned a couple times the uh, extraterrestrials. Um, a lot of things that I've been seeing over the years is about uh, disclosure is getting ready to happen. I know they talked about it in 2008, 2009, here we are 2010. What do you feel about disclosure? Are we waiting for the motherships to land on our, our heads above us? Well, I think disclosure is already happening in a subtle way through like uh, different uh, things on the television where you'll have like uh, different military people coming out and telling about their stories on CNN or on the History Channel you'll have some like ancient aliens uh, on that channel and uh, there is a certain type of disclosure that's already happening trying to prepare people for when it ultimately becomes common knowledge. I know in the end of the 90s we talked just briefly about you know how you guys were all talking about 2012 and already, already, already mentioning things like that. Where do you see Head PE, where do you see yourself in just a few years? Well, I don't think, contrary to what everyone seems to think, I don't think it's going to be some like wake up in December 21st, 2012 and the world turns upside down or that there's an end to anything. You know, it may be so subtle where you don't even notice anything's changing, but Head PE will just continue to uh, play music for uh, the people and the common man and that's just what we're going to do is take it one day at a time, you know. There was some confusion on where we were playing. I don't give a fuck how many people show up. We'll always be in Des Moines to play a few times every fucking year. Um, are you, are you very much living in the moment? Oh yeah, definitely. And that's what's great about uh, being in Head PE is we're just always, uh, we're not always worried about the future, you know. One thing when I listen to your albums, one of the amazing things, I feel such a connect with the lyrics, with the uh, the uh, personality that seems to come out in a lot of the things. Do you ever worry that sometimes your message is misconstrued with, I know sometimes you write as as a, as like a character, you're not you know actually saying those as coming from your heart, but a lot of times we get confused as to what you're saying. Do you ever think that your message is getting confused on some of your albums? Well, I'm sure it is, but you know, hopefully if I just put it in an honest way, that the majority of the people will get the majority, most of what I'm trying to say. You know, I can't control it once it leaves my studio. It's kind of confusing because Head P.E. talking about love and shit and the music's all fuck you, motherfucker. You gotta focus your anger though. Don't be angry at someone in the building. That's not what this is all about. I can't stand fights amongst family members, but I love mixed martial arts. How about that, Cain Velasquez? I love when the underdog wins. I love when the little guy knocked the shit out of the big guy. You know what I'm saying? If David and Goliath, I'm rooting for David, motherfucker. I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I want to thank you for even thank you, brother. taking the moment out of your, your schedule. All you right, guys are dog. amazing. Appreciate that, man. Um, thank you. I got to get ready, man. Get out of town and go into nature so you can hear yourself fucking think, am I right?